Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator. If you guys couldn't tell by the people walking up from me in the background, the male delinquents are now in the game. I don't want to talk about it. I just got to see it for myself. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody sit down, buckle the fuck up, because here we go. So as you guys can see right here, we got one, two, three, four, five badass looking dudes. I can't even lie. They look really slick. I'm going to see the info on all of them one by one. We're going to start with this guy right over here. This first guy is Hianari Sumiato. Where'd you get the beauty scar, tough guy? Eating pussy? He carries a weapon in the bag on his back. Will not hesitate to defend himself if he feels threatened. Spends most of his time in the incinerator area behind the school with his fellow delinquents. Next guy we got is this dude right here. His name is Gaku Hikisuri. This guy right here, his name is Umeji Kuziguchi. And he kind of looks like somebody very familiar. What was that? He actually has different information. It says, Osoro Shidesu, the leader of the delinquent gang, is absent from school. This student is Osoro's right-hand man and has been trusted with leading the delinquents while Osoro was absent. So since Osoro is not at the school, he became the leader, but once he comes back, he's gonna go back to being a little bitch boy. Oh man. The next delinquent is Hokuto Furukuzi, and the last guy right over here, if I can get a picture, there you go, is Dairoku Surikizu. Oh, so they're brothers. No, they're not brothers. I totally messed that up. This guy's Furikuzu, and this guy is Surikizu. Okay, it sounded a little bit familiar, but who cares about the names? We want to see what they're all about. So let's go check that out right now. Hell yeah! All right, so the delinquents are all huddled up in a circle. They got their radio playing in some box right here. We can actually talk to them, so let's see what they're all about. Can I talk to you for a moment? What's Let me problem? compliment him. I just wanted to tell you that you look lovely today. I don't care what you think. Let me compliment this guy. Is it the same thing? I don't care what you think. Okay, obviously they do not care what I think. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my knife Go and they're going to feel threatened away. once they see me. Huh? Don't even don't think even about it. Think about it. Lost. Oh yeah, what you going to do about it? Wait. Oh shit, there we go. Yeah. All right, let's go. E. Oh do shit. It. Get her! You can do okay, it! Okay, let's go. go. This is intense. Away. Put her F. down! Put her down! Mm. <gasps> yes! Whoa! In the balls! In those delinquent nuts! I'm oh, and I can this. pick up his weapon! Can I hit him with it? Oh, that is so cool! Oh, crap! Dude, they won't stop fighting me! Stop it! Go! <laughs> go! Okay, so now these guys are all tired. Let me go for this guy right here. Whoa, never mind. I guess I'm going for the same guy. Fuck off, dude! You know what? Let me beat his ass. Goodness gracious. Forget this. Taking out the naifu. I'm gonna end laifus now. Whoa! There we go. Now this guy came to the party. Oh, yeah. Kicking the balls again. That's her specialty. Just kicking Japanese nuts. Okay, so we can kill all of them now, right? Because they're all tired? Nope. Just gotta get the big old crazy ass. Okay, so these delinquents are a piece of cake. What the hell? What? So I went from like a one-on-one -on -one combat to this guy just trying to take away my knife. He knew I was too strong. What happens if I lose the fight? Like I just get my ass beat. Let me just let this guy whoop on me with a bat. Ooh. God, getting hit with a bat must hurt like fuck. I think I'm almost dead because my screen is pretty red. Jeez. I feel bad for her. I kind of want to win this fight. It's okay. We're her. losing for the greater good, guys. I just want to see what's going to happen. Come on now. Hurry up and beat my ass. How weak are you with the bat? Not welcome. Oh, there you go. You done? Good. Don't don't screw me again. Okay. Wait, what the heck? I'm already fucked up and you're still whipping my ass? Beat it. Oh, there you go. Okay. So they just gave me like one simple beating. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Not Yandere chan is messed up. I feel so bad for her. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, what are you doing? Is he following me? No, I'm already hurting. Can I go on the bench too? Is this where the losers sit? Oh, I really feel bad for her, guys. Can we talk to these guys? Let's ask him for a favor and for him to follow me. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something cool. Why would I do that? Scram. Damn. What if we gossip about somebody? Let's gossip about the evil girl. I have to tell you something about this student. Tell someone who cares. God damn, these guys are savages. How about we apologize Go to the guy that we away. fought? I don't start fights. I was just defending myself. I don't give a damn what. Get lost. Okay, now you're starting to piss me off. Now I'm going to get this crowbar, and now we got some problems. Let's go. Do you want some of this? No. 
No more getting my ass whooped. Time this. to hand out the ass whooping. All right, guys, enough of the bullshit. Let's get a little bit saucy. Let's see what happens when we ask a student to follow us and then we get into a fight with a delinquent. Don't How are they going to react? So let's just start a fight what? with this guy. And this. she's rubbing her chin pubes. She likes what she sees. Okay. Not surprising from the evil chick. That's it. She doesn't care. She's kind of just chilling. She's like, yes, give me more. All right, this time let's get Kakona. The evil chick wasn't a good one to witness a fight because I'm pretty sure she loves all the blood and the bruising and the violence. Let's get Kakona, who's a little bit more cheerful, who doesn't like violence like that. Okay, Kakona is also rubbing the chin pubes. Maybe she likes violence as well. And a good nut kicking. Yeah, she didn't really react. She wasn't like, oh my God, and then ran away. So she doesn't mind the violence. What the heck? Where did you come from? This bitch came out of nowhere. Okay, so apparently if we get some students to follow us, they don't really care if we're fighting the delinquents. But I guess the student council can hear the punches from a mile away and then they run all the way from wherever they were just to pepper spray you. But let's see what happens if we lower a delinquent's reputation even more. Does a bully bully them? We'll go for the Ryuji looking dude. Let me lower that reputation down to a good old 80. Damn it. Guys. <laughs> The girls are all going to the dude's desk. <laughs> I'm assuming that this is his desk because he's the only person that I lowered the reputation with. So the bullies can bully a delinquent? I thought the delinquents were like the toughest shit in school. Okay, let's fast forward time. Let's go to lunch. Let's see if they actually bully this guy or if he's too tough for that stuff. Wow. <laughs> they really are bullying this guy. What the hell is this? This dude literally has a bat in his backpack. And he's still getting that ass clapped by a bully. I can't believe this. Oh, and now he's scared. So wait, what happens when he goes back to his friends? Is he still scared like this? Or does he still have that like delinquent persona? Let's get Masume to follow me. And then let's take out this Naifu and her Laifu right in front of him. Wait, what? I wasn't trying to fight you. Come on, man. What if I kill her in front of you? Do you care? Hey, excuse me. I did this for you. Look at this. Look at this. Hey. Buddy. Oh. Look at this. He likes it. So if you kill a bully after she bullies him, then he likes it because he's so goddamn evil. Okay, so we know how a delinquent reacts when we What's kill a bully that's bullied another delinquent. But let's see what everybody in the group thinks about it. So let me get close enough so they can all see. Get my knife foo and the life foo. And they're all evil. They're all so goddamn evil. Let me actually reset the game so the delinquent doesn't have a low reputation anymore. Let me see if they still react the same way if I kill a bully. Okay, this time nobody has low reputation for the delinquent, so there should be no reason for them to hate a bully. Let me end her life right here, and let's see what happens. Mm. Oh my god. They're all clasping their hands together. They're just so goddamn evil. So it doesn't matter if the delinquent got bullied. The delinquents just hate the bullies, and that's that. All right, let's see what happens if I fight a delinquent in front of a teacher. I got two delinquents side by side on me. Huh? Here we go. Oh, the teacher, wait, what? What the hell just happened? What the actual fuck? This teacher glided over here, stopped right there, Everybody's looking at me. It's giving me anxiety and I have no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> I think I broke the game. All right, let's try this one again. Let's get into some shit with this guy. You can do this. Wait, where's the teacher at? Sensei, I'm getting into some trouble. Help me. Is she even in here? Oh, there she is. She's watching me. Oh shit. Oh god, student council fuck. Why am I making this so complicated? I have a teacher right there. I can start some shit right here. And let's see what happens. You got this. Go, Get her. Go. Okay. Obviously, the teacher can notice because you guys see that right there. Come on. Notice. There you go. Uh. Hello? Are you going to pin me to the ground or something? Okay, I broke the game again. All right, guys. I'm going to try it one more time. This time, I'm not going to use something as intimidating as a knife. We're just going to use a good old baseball bat. And we're gonna swing it on their heads right now. So here we go. Okay, go, she go, notices. Go, go, go. That's a good sign. And nothing. But anyway, enough of that teacher mumbo jumbo. Let's see if any students or senpai or the teachers react to Yandere Chan looking like she just got her ass whooped right here. Let's start off with senpai. Can I help you? Okay, so senpai clearly does not care because he says those same lines all the time no matter what. Is something wrong? Yeah, okay, never mind. What about these girls? Do they notice anything? No? Okay, what if I talk to one of them? 
Can I talk to you for a moment? Let's compliment her. Just want to tell you that you look lovely today. Wow, that means a lot coming from you. Thank you so much. Okay, so they don't care either. What if I go towards a teacher? You're not one of my students. You're not one of You're my not students. One of my students. Wow, nobody cares at this school. And you wonder why I am the way I am. All right, guys, but that's enough of the delinquents. If you guys have any more questions or anything you want me to do in a future episode, please let me know down low in the comments below. But there is a new headmaster tape somewhere in this office. I wonder if it's in the trash can. So how many tapes are in here? There's three tapes. Okay, so all the tapes are in the trash can. Let's listen to this third tape, and let's see if we can get some clarification about who Megami's aunt is, and if she's connected to Fun Girl in any way. Because a lot of you guys seem to think that Megami's aunt is Fun Girl, but who knows? Oh, it's Headmaster Tape 10 instead of 3, so the story isn't going to continue where Tape 2 left off. So I guess we might not know about Megami's aunt, but let's just listen in, and you guys tell me what you think. Bochan? I have no clue what they intend to do in this room, but I'm not really in a position to decline. All things considered, this situation isn't as bad as it could have been. They could have demanded an absurd sum of money, and instead, all they want is a room. Their request seemed harmless enough, and there was a suitable room available, so I decided to comply with their demands. Well, it's not like I really have a choice in the first place. They also asked me to make sure that the room has certain equipment inside of it before they arrived. Computer monitors and hard drives. We already had a surplus of supplies like that, so it wasn't a problem. The tricky part was convincing the rest of the faculty not to enter a specific room for any reason. And not to question it, either. I spent a long time mulling it over and eventually came up with a cover story that seemed convincing enough to believe. To be perfectly honest, I'm a little proud of it. I told the faculty that a special needs student with extreme agoraphobia wishes to attend Academy High. Hold on. I have no idea what agoraphobia is, so I'm gonna Google it right now. And for anybody else who doesn't know what that is, we're about to get educated. Okay, so according to Wikipedia, agoraphobia is an anxiety disorder characterized by symptoms of anxiety in situations where the person perceives the environment to be unsafe with no easy way to get away. These situations can include open spaces, public transit, shopping malls, or simply being outside their homes. Being in these situations may result in panic attacks. Okay, well I did know that that was a disorder, but I didn't know it was called agoraphobia. Anyway, let's continue. Because of their intense social anxiety, they will remain secluded in one of the school's rooms and are not to be disturbed because it would trigger a panic attack. Teachers will record their lectures when class is in session and email these recordings, along with class assignments, to the reclusive student once per day. I will personally handle anything else the student requires, such as meals at lunchtime. Some of the teachers thought my story sounded a little sketchy, and wanted to hear details. Their questions were harmless, but 
I was sweating bullets, and I felt like I was being interrogated by the police. Eventually, I convinced them to believe the cover story, and the meeting ended with the faculty praising me for being so accommodating to a mentally handicapped adolescent. <laughs> I felt a little guilty for deceiving them, but it's far from the worst thing I've done. The only thing that matters is the end result. We now have a room which is off-limits to students and faculty alike. The hacker never told me their name, age, even their gender. It's frustrating. If I'm going to be put through such a harrowing experience, I at least want to know who's behind it. I set up a hidden camera outside of the room that has been set aside for the hacker. When I got into work this morning, I checked the recording, only to find that it had been replaced with a graphic of a black silhouette wearing a red wig, along with the words, Don't try this again. Okay, so it is Infochan, because she's the, the only one with red hair that's also like a hacker, and, and that needs a room in Academy High. I asked the hacker if they needed anything else from me. Daily meals, or anything of the sort. They told me not to worry about them, and to simply go about my business as usual. They explicitly told me to pretend they don't exist. It's going to be nearly impossible for me to put them out of my mind when they could end my career with a single click. It feels like there's a slimy creature crawling underneath my clothing, and I simply have to grit my teeth and live with it. Then again, I don't really have any right to complain. Perhaps this is simply karmic retribution for my actions. It's very fortunate that these little therapy sessions were confined to cassette tapes. If I had been making digital recordings instead, the hacker would have a lot of very dangerous information right now. With that said, I no longer feel comfortable keeping these tapes around. They're too much of a liability. I should dispose of them, but it would be such a shame. Thirty years of my innermost thoughts just tossed away like trash. It would feel like I'm wiping someone's memory. What, what was the point of recording anything at all if I was just going to destroy it one day? There was never anyone in my life who I felt comfortable expressing my anxieties to. This tape recorder has been like a... like a close friend who I could trust with my deepest secrets. I know I have to dispose of these tapes, but... Maybe I'll keep them for a few days. Listen to them one last time. Try to figure out where it all went wrong. Then dispose of them when I've said my goodbyes. But... There is one tape that I'm already prepared to part ways with. Here we go. The tape I made after Mr. Psycho's recent, uh demands. Okay. It's far, far too risky for a recording like that to exist. That one must be destroyed immediately. Ooh. So it's probably not a headmaster tape, huh? It's probably a blank tape that has some incriminating evidence of Mr. Psycho. So I thought it was pretty cool that Yandere Dev went from Headmaster Tape 1 to 2. Instead of going to 3, he went all the way to 10, where the shit already hit the fan. The Headmaster's old, his voice sounds tired. So now we know it's gonna get really meaty and juicy in all the head tapes that are in between 1, 2, and 10. Let me know what you guys thought about that tape in the comments down below. But I'm going to end this episode of Yandere Simulator here. If you guys have any comments, questions, challenges, or myths for my Yandere Simulator, Simulator Myth Series. Please let me know down low in the comments below and I will try to get another episode as soon as possible. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it one big fat like and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is dead. Dude!